part of ISPER, which allows you to define the per statement configuration to combine transient, uh, transient and full resistant behavior, uh, resilient behavior. As we saw before, the, the, the paradigmic change is that we switched into a transient behavior. ISPER allows you to come back into a, uh, a persistent one and integrate both. Uh, it allows you a hot standby API and hot backup, uh, which again are important because we are not supposed to switch it off. And it has a very uh, optimized data storage for, uh, for the incoming data because sometimes you are interested to store the results of the query you are registering. So let's, part, let's talk about the development and the deployment. Uh, EPL statements uh, have an SQL-like syn syntax. We, like, we will see that in a while. But they also, uh, they can also process uh, plain old Java object or .NET object. But yes, Esper, Esper is available for Java and uh, .NET. The deployment can be both standalone, so, so Esper can run by itself, or can be embedded through an existing middleware. That's important, we can decide how to design our system uh, in a distributed way, or by using Esper itself as a core logic of our program. So that was basically the introduction. Of course, there are multi more than this to say, but the documentation of Esper is, is, very, is very huge. You can find it online, and we I will show, we sh uh, share with you the resource later. Let's talk about the um, email processing language. So EPL uh, has two main characteristics. It allows you to define continuous queries and also complex pattern matching. I provide you this brief cheat sheet about the main construct. We have uh, sources, which are push based. They are supposed to send you data and in different, situ in different uh, uh, format, as you saw the adapters. EPL queries instead are registered upon uh, these, uh, these uh, sources and they push the result to a component called the listener. The listener basically acts as a, 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 as a switch. You get the results from a query and push into other queries or other services. The subscribers, on the other hand, provides you a visualization and the actual result of your processing. So it's the end point of a query network. That's why I, saw, I said query network, because query can be pipelined to compose a, a you know, a complex result. Let's see indeed uh, an example of the continuous qu uh, query model. All these components we saw in the slide before can be you know, distributed in a graph uh, whose link are represented by the data, the data streams. Uh, look, uh, the listener is the, the main logic which forwards the result between queries. That can be confusing. We will see that these components can be both uh, encoded in a, in a programming language or expressed by EPL. Well, let's start with mm -hmm. our running example. For the running example, uh, there are <coughs> two parts. The first one is exploiting the online application for EPL testing. You, it's online, you can actually go to this link and test it with me what I'm doing. I will try to be as slow as possible, but you don't have too much time, so stop me if I'm going too fast. And this is the, do you get the, sorry, uh, if you go to the page of the tut uh, today tutorial, you will find all the links, uh, also that one. So you don't need the link for my slides. You can go on uh, wiki.noazy.org slash big data tutorial, and there you will find the, that link. Um, though, this is the uh, running example of today. The request is counting the number of uh, uh, fires detect using a set of smoke and temperature sensors in the last 10 minutes. So let's start defining the events. We have a smoke event, so a detection from a, a sensor who actually identify the presence of smoke. And to describe it, we name the sensor who identified through a string and a Boolean state if there is or not smoke detection. Temperature event uh, is the equivalent for the, our temperature sensor. So he has a double this time, who included the measurement of the, of the, of the temperature. I will use Celsius, so 
I will. It doesn't matter too much, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm. It's easier for me to, to get the right count. And finally, we have the fire event. So the event which represented the, the identification of fire, which basically uh, fuse merge all the previous event into a single one to preserve the state. Okay. The condition, uh, as I said, as I said, we are evaluating this uh, this uh, behavior over time. So we need a, a trigger, a condition who allows us, which allows us to define when a fire event has to be triggered to the to this our subscribers. The condition is that the temperature is more than 50 Celsius degree, which is about I guess uh, 130 Fahrenheit. I'm not sure. I didn't. No, I, don't, I still don't know how, the, how it works. So this is the representation has a graph of uh, uh, our problem. We have two data sources, the temperature and the smoke sensors. We have a query, which is uh, at the same, uh, the same sensor, say true for smoke, and the temperature is more than 50 degrees. Though we have a, a listener who get the results from the query and say, okay, now it's time to trigger a fire event because I detect the right situation. And then we have uh, another query which counts this number of events and tell to the, the source, okay, we reached the point you want to know and now it's time for you to, to react as you want. You know, you have, a, you have your result in your hand. So let's go to the event declaration. Uh, in this moment, we will see the event declaration through the EPL language which is basically uh, exploit the create schema clause. The create schema clause allows you to define an event completely. You, uh, you describe a schema name for your event, and the as uh, keywords tells you, tells, you, tell you, tells you how to uh, list all the properties which are included in those event. You can also um, specify inheritance, EPL, is built up, uh, up on object-oriented query languages, so it, ex it uh, allows you to exploit inheritance. Let's see the example for our, um, our running example. So create schema temperature sensor event uh, has two attributes. One is a string for the, the sensor, and one is a temperature double. Uh, similarly, for the other events, and now I will, sorry, I will move to the So let's start uh, defining our events. As we said before, this is the, inter the web interface through which we uh, will test our, uh, our running example. So the, the event declaration is basically a definition of a statement. We put there in the EPL definition set. There are three parts, the EPL, the actual data, and the results of the queries. So uh, let's come back here. And what we see is that these are the data we need for our running example. We have different detection, and plus there are something that uh, <coughs> describe the time evaluation. That's a point that we, a tricky point we need to specify. ISPER allows you to, to control the time externally, okay? That's not a requirement. It depends on your on your use case. Okay, he has an internal clock, as we saw in the uh, logical the functional model that Emanuele showed you. But sometimes this internal clock is a constraint that is too much strict for your application. That's why we they switch to a model that which allows it to to you describe this the time uh, the time passing. 
in the online version, this is, a, is, this is the only way to, to process it. So this, uh, this common t equal t plus one second describe the, the, the movements of the time. Uh, basically, we need it to, to say to the core of ISPER that it's past, it's past one second. So let's copy our, the data to our application online. Okay, so um, this is basically all for the event creation through uh, the EPL language. Now, uh, let's go to the query registration. Uh, this is the syntax of the uh, query, the part of EPL which allows you to describe uh, uh, a query. As you say, it is very similar to ESQL, which I, I guess everybody is uh, know how to how it works. The main part as a, as a, are the select clause and the where clause, which basically allows you to describe a pattern on the uh, sorry uh, a condition on the incoming stream and a selection of the the attributes that the stream contains. Uh, it's very uh, there is not much difference from a relational stream. Right now we are working on that. Uh, the main difference between, uh, SQ, uh, between SQL and EPL is the, the concept of uh, tables against the one of views. EPL use views. But we will go in detail about this in a, in a second. Before, let me show you two examples of query. You know, that I'll, one is with the aggregate, one is a, I call it stream lookup, because it basically select everything that's inside the stream. We will test now on the data we on the to the learning interface. So uh, this special <coughs> clause here, this allows uh, you to the, to name the query on the stream. In this way, it's easy to retrieve it. And then, as we saw, as I show you, there is the where clause here. While here is an aggregation, so I didn't specify it. It's optional for me. Uh, actually, uh, let's go to the previous slide. Sure. Uh, in here. You don't have within in, in EPL. Sorry, say again. Within, within. Oh yes, we have both. Actually, the within clause is is uh, specific for complex event queries. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, as I already told you, uh, event syn uh, EPL syntax is kind of uh, fuzzy. He has both the <laughs> the, fun the 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 data stream management system functionality, which has basically the windows. We will say so that in a second, and also it allows you to specify constraints on the incoming events, counting each piece of information by itself. That's a standard way for complex event processors. Yes, it has the within clause, but they're all optional. So basically you can actually, you can specify both of them together. So, so you consider the time by the, you know, that you know, in the previous thing, yeah? How, how do you consider the time for your query? Just, yeah, the interval. So Say again, the Windows side, how do you consider the Windows uh, Okay, let, let's wait a second, I have a slide about that. Uh, we, go, we tested th these two queries in, and then we, we move on the concept of views. Th that will be the next topic I cover. Mm -hmm. So, let's start this one. Sorry, I didn't want to collaborate. Submission. Demo effect as always, <laughs> but fortunately, I cover it. So this is the all the queries we saw today, and this is the result of our query. Oh, I see it's too it's too too small. I am sorry. There we go. This the query I registered, okay, the query number number z uh, number zero, and this is the result against uh, the stream. So uh, we have uh, the selection of uh, the whole content of the stream uh, as, uh, as well as it come over. So all the representation of it. Uh, the query number one instead compute the an aggregation of the stream and give us the 
incremental average. Anytime an event comes over, it computes the average again and answers us. Okay, so let's see the increasing because the events are going through 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 55, and so on and so forth. No, uh, to answer your question, EPL views, uh, that's the main difference between SQL, we say. Uh, they are similar to a SQL table. They define the uh, data available for filtering and query, and they also allow you to sort, uh, group, grouping, aggregating the data to the average function, for example. But and they are usually represented as a window from EPL. Which kind of window do you have? Not just one, you have multiple. That's why I wait for you ans to answer your question. Basically, there are two Speci um, two topo top topology oriented topology to, to describe the, the, the windows. The first one is logical versus physical. Logical is the description of over time, while physical is the actual content in terms of number of events the window contains. Then we have another distinction: the sliding versus the tumbling window. The sliding window is a this definition of uh, either a time duration or a number of events and a span number which basically slides. Uh, what you have to remember is that two consequent sliding window are overlapping of the slide parameter, which can be uh, time-based. For example, two windows of 10 seconds, which overlap of one second, or um, physical. So two windows of 10 elements, which overlap of one element. That's basically all, and then we go to all the details. The first one is the logical sliding window. So we have uh, a definition of a uh, time duration, let's say 10 seconds, or say, and events are incoming over time. The window is moving in that in this direction, okay? And anytime the window shots, it moves off the slide parameter. So we have like an overlapping, as you say. The, the, some events are going out from the window each time it moves. Some events are coming over. So the information you are maintaining is not the same all the time. The answer changed, okay? This is the query. <coughs> Uh, I wish I give you for as an example. The syntax is uh, the win uh, column uh, time, and you specify the time duration. Let's see what happened. This is the query uh, number two, and its result I show you. Sorry, there we go. the aggregation, but our window is for seconds. So at the point of this, the average is more. Because sometimes some events are out of the window, and but a new element, which has a greater value, is inside. So the, the correct computation doesn't count the first one, which was 30, and is increasing. Okay, We are limiting the, 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 the initial view we have. What you have to remember when you count on uh, logical sliding window, that the uh, reports are soon as an event arrives or expires. So they output in these two, con these two contexts. Then we have the logical tumbling window. So is uh, again defined over time, but this time two consequent windows are not overlapped. The whole content is thrashed. And remember, we are in a transient context, so there is no way to retrieve it. Okay, so let's see uh, another example, which is the average computed uh, uh, again on four seconds, but this time is tumbling. So the syntax is uh, this one. The window definition as batch. Batch is a, a synonym. Uh, tumbling window are defined in EPL and not only as batch win as batch window, but we prefer uh, the tumbling tumbling naming for for them. Sorry, our interface. This is the the liquidity I'm gonna execute. Okay, and as we see now, liquidity number three. We have just one result. <coughs> Why? We have one result because uh, 
logical thumbing windows report only when the window closes. Okay? So basically each four seconds in this case. You have the result of the content of the window anytime the window is passed over time. The part of the windows aren't counted at all. No. It's not emitted. Say again, sorry. They're not emitted. The event is not emitted. No, you have not an incremental update. You have just I mean that's the difference between the sliding and, and the thumbing. It changes semantic. They're not more Too late. I'm not used to. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, the, 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 the reporting is not more incremental. No, but I mean internally, things yeah. goes incrementally, and then you, you have a report after. Okay. So let's switch to the physical window. This time, what we specify for the description of the window is no more time, but the actual content, uh, cardinality, we say. So think of the window as a set. We specify, for example, five events. And this is an example. The win-length notation is the one you need to specify the number. And let's switch to our EPL interface. A lot of problem for it. This is the query number four. This one. So we are computing the average over time. Sorry, uh, as soon as a new event is coming over. Let's say we have five results. Why? Because, as I said, physical sliding window reports as soon as, as a new event go, comes. Okay? So we have no more the restriction of the outgoing event, but just, on, just the one of a new event incoming. Uh, why I spend time specifying this thing? Because these are the actual uh, de uh, design decision pe the people who develop EPL uh, take. Talk. To, uh, for this particular semantic of this language. It was up to them. It was not, you know, it's a design decision, okay? So the last one is the physical tumbling. As you guess, uh, there is no much difference of the one we saw before. Uh, in your opinion, when does this window shot? No guess? Nobody? Of course, uh, as soon as the window closes. So and the result, uh, once the window is, is full, it shoots you the result. <laughs> Sorry. OK. So this was the query number. Uh, query number five. So, uh, as soon as we, uh, as long as we have five events, the output is just one. Do you have a question? Okay. Okay. Now, uh, another feature of EPL is the control reporting. Uh, the control reporting is basically allows you to dis define the behavior change the behavior of the query uh, reporting, OK? As you saw, each window has its own semantic for the, for, the report, for the actual reporting. Through the output close, you can uh, override this behavior and decide your own. He has different uh, opportunity. He works both with the uh, uh, physical and the logical window. Let's see an example. Select the average from the temperature sensor in a, with a time window, is uh, a sliding time window. Uh, output a snapshot every two seconds. So we have two new things here, the output close and the snapshot. The snapshot is the, uh, the close that uh, asks for the whole content of the window. 
So if it's specified, the, the, the reporting will contain the whole content. So let's see the example. Okay. This is the query number six. So uh, as soon as the, the window shows, any two seconds. So as the time uh, schedule here is just four seconds. So we have two reports, okay? And the current, uh, the current content of the window is uh, just the average. So 35 for the first one, which basically is the average of these two events, 30 and 40. And then we have the average of the last, the last the events between uh, 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 until the, this, should, this, this time events here. Okay. There is an example instead with the, uh, with the physical window. Again, we have the snapshot closed, so the, basically the query is the same. What the difference is just the nature of the window we are using. This is query number seven. And the result will be similar, but not the same. It's the same for the uh, first output, because it's basically he is mediating between the first two events, while it's different for the second one. He triggers one second earlier, because now he's up on the number of events that are coming over. And as you see, even though the window is five events long, we are, is a, it is reporting every two. So is, we are overriding that kind of behavior. Then, uh, as I show you, uh, I show you uh, some new features of uh, other features of, uh, of EPL. As I, we said in the beginning, he has both the functionality of uh, data stream management system, the one we just saw, a window and uh, reporting. Uh, even pa even uh, pattern matching instead is uh, specifically for complex event processing. Uh, basically, it looks on the data incoming stream for a, a pattern you describe in, to your, in your query. Pattern can be temporal as well as physical, as the, win uh, as the window were, and they are implemented through a finite state machine. What does it mean? That the evaluation uh, goes as well as the event are coming over. We see a specific custom for, the, for controlling this behavior but it's something that you have to keep in mind when you design your query, because each event is a st moves your query to another state, okay? This is the... So, TPL pattern operators, we have several of them. The first one are logical operator, and or or not, allows you to, con to describe which events we want and which one we don't want, or which combination of events we, we, we want to describe. The following by is uh, an interc interesting operator which describes a uh, uh, following by relation. Uh, that's something that is important in, comp in complex event processing querying because you, you have to keep in mind that the stream is ordered. So events are coming and they are naturally ordered over time. You can exploit this behavior to, for example, in our query we will see we are waiting for uh, an incre uh, increasing of temperature after uh, a smoking, a smoke detection. The every and the every disking operator can allow you to control the pattern termination. So they describe how the finite state machine evaluates your query pattern. Um, there are also uh, sub-expression, uh, sub timer within, timer within max and while expression. The one you asked me before, they basically allows you to describe the time passing in this context, you know. Uh, they add a, a time constraint to the, your finite state machine. But let's see uh, an example. So we select uh, a sensor with a pattern uh, A followed by a sensor, uh, temporal sensor event. We have uh, actually a lot of constraints. You have a, a constraint on temperature, which is specified within the event itself. 
and the determinant within uh, specify that we want this result uh, with a constraint of two seconds between the events. Okay, so. No, the order matters in terms of uh, uh, um, kind of events. So we want that the smoke sensor events it happens before the temperature event. That's what we are asking. We want this, sorry, uh, after. We are asking this event here to come before this one. Okay? Because the idea can be the opposite, or you may want to check both of them. Yeah. Yeah. So you add the yeah, but this is just without the constraint. Right. Mm, anyway, I see what you want to. What do you mean? So this is the query number eight, and let's see its result. So what we are asking is, tell me which sensor match this combination. We have just two, trig two, two outputs because we are specifying it uh, in two different, uh, with a condition of uh, two seconds. And let's look at how the, ch the clouds every change the behavior of the stream. We expect to have it, uh, let's say, on uh, timestamp time two seconds and timestamp four. Why we have a timestamp two and timestamp three? Why? Because it's changing how the, the, um, the evaluation of the pattern is evaluated. Let's go in detail on this. So, default: every operator pattern is uh, stopped when it's evaluated through uh, the first time. So the trigger, the, the query triggers, and then it, it doesn't trigger anymore. What well, with every close? Any time it's, uh, it's evaluated as true, a new expression is generated, and you expect it to trigger again. Okay, so the, watch out because the precedence matters a lot. So let's see an example. Every A followed by a B. This is our event incoming. So we have A1, B1, C1. Uh, detects an event uh, A followed by an event B. This query triggers when. Uh, on B1, because he has this precedence here, okay, so they are together, and it triggers on B3, because this B3 is immediately followed by an A, okay? Again, the new triggers is on B4, because even though we have an event in, in the middle, the, the pattern matches. We have this, this following by relation respected, okay? But what happens if we avoid the the, 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 bar, the brackets. We have the same events coming, but now we trigger again in B1 because we, the pattern is, is, uh, is evaluated. But we trigger on, on, on B3, uh, sorry, uh, on B3 because, we, because of B2, because of A2. And again on B3 because of A3. So any time an A is found, okay, we are waiting for a B. Okay, the, the final one, doesn't change this behavior because this A here is already triggered for this B. So this pattern matches once, this pattern matches once, and then the query is stopped. The, 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 the finished statement is, is over. And now we are waiting for a new pattern as A followed by a B. Now change it again. We have an A followed by every B. So it triggers for every B in our stream. The first one is B1, and we have A1. Then we have B2, which triggers for, again, A1, because we are evaluating all the B, and this pattern here is still valid. For B3, A1 is still valid. So A2, A3 are not considered right now. B4, again, triggers for A1. So the pattern is, is being uh, re-evaluated any time a B comes. And it starts from the first A we have in the stream, OK? Not from the last one. It's not forgetting the first A. So, if it's, so you're considering the first A and you're not 
scaling if the rest is up. Okay, this is an abstraction. I didn't say it. you are right. We are considering the wall stream together. Of course, it, it happens with the, with the constraints of uh, uh, within an interval because uh, you cannot process all the wall stream. But oh. let's think of, of these events here as a as a, a bench of uh, an incoming stream, and uh, as as well as long as this bench is valid, these are the pattern who matches, like which matches. Does it make sense? No, I mean, I mean, uh, sorry, a, um, a bench, not a batch, a bench of, of, of events, and uh, uh, a set of events, an order set of events, li sorry, list, a list of events, okay, which is finite in number, because, okay, uh, you cannot, uh, you are always, always relying on the assumption that we are processing a part of the stream, not altogether. The, in this case, the, um, what matters is the, the, the length of the, of the pattern. So if my pattern is uh, uh, as two statement, A and B, the system will keep the, the relevant part in memory to make the pattern evaluate. So you decide the size of the list. Is it comparable? Is you it can comparable do both. No, no, you can do both. You can oh. define the, the size of the list, like specifying how many events evaluate in a while, in a second, sorry, uh, together. Or you can specify the, the number of the pattern. You can actually just uh, apply a query without specifying the window, okay? The system itself will count the number of A. For example, since he has to trigger every B, it will remind that B is relevant, and then any time an A is coming, it will trigger, okay? If you don't specify any, uh, th that's why putting together concept of DSM stream and complex even processor uh, is hard to understand, makes things harder to understand. Um, is it a is a finite state machine evaluating. So uh, he has a number of state that belongs of the number of uh, the clause in your pattern you want to evaluate. So in this case, you have two states. The one is always uh, occupied by a B, and any times a, an A comes, the pattern is evaluated. Does it make sense for you? Is so the pattern itself acts as a as a window, but is a is a is is a, uh, is a forcing representation. We, we should not think about it in this way, because it is not. It's more like, uh, it's more like a queue of events, and you are evaluating uh, a number of them according to your pattern. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, but I'm but not the sure. The evaluation is based on B, right? For every B, you evaluate your list. Right. Think about you have two events in your hand, in this case, because your pattern uh, ask you for two events. One is always occupied by B, so because B1 is Kames, so you take B1 here, and then you are evaluating for any, uh, any uh, for, for the first A. The second, and w once you evaluate it, since the, the default behavior is that you have to trash the pattern, now you trash your B1. And as soon as a new B2 is coming, you take it in your hand and you wait for A. But the, you have already an A in your stream because you can evaluate it, so you trigger. Does it, does it make sense for you? So by default, yeah. the, the list is unbounded? No, no. <laughs> That's the, old, the, old, the, 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 the big problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, I mean, the I list understand that it backtracks. The, uh, okay, it backtracks okay. to know that there is an A that happened before. But you said if you don't specify a window, that it considers the whole stream by default, right? Theoretically speaking, yes. But no, also I mean, I'm not sure you cannot specify a window. Uh, no, you can. You can write that. Consider the full stream. Oh, let's try. So the idea is, yeah. uh, if you don't write a window, it will try to do this. And uh, technically speaking, it can crack. Yeah. Because uh, as soon as you ah, have okay. the first day, it creates uh, a finite state machine that is waiting for B. And every time it enters uh, the B, it, it will somehow fire the result. In this specific example, it's not going to create any problem because you can't forget all the new incoming A because you can ignore them because it's already open. The machine. But for example, in, if you in this example, that one, it will crash. That yeah. one will crash the system <coughs> because it will basically explode the, the Cartesian problem. Right. Yeah. The, you can crash the system right in the wrong way. Yes, it's uh, as per law. <laughs> So let's finish the, 
this, with this last example. Now we have both the, the, the pattern is extended. So we are evaluating every A and every B. Uh, that's completely different from the first one we had. Now the, the system triggers as any time uh, as for any combination of these two events uh, that matches. The first one is A1, B1. The second, as soon as the second B comes, a new pattern is generated, is, uh, is matched. So A1, B2, we have it. And the, the third one, third B that's come over, actually matches three patterns. We have A3, B3, A1, B3, and A2, B3 again. As you said, yeah, you can crash the memory of the system because you will f remember everything. Actually, I think it is not, uh, <laughs> it's not that easy. You, you will also face the timing problem because the real, as, as, as I say, how can I say, the relevance of the events matters over time. So you are never targeting the whole stream. You have also always such a time constraint that asks you for specify how many or how long an event is relevant. So how do you specify that here in this case? Like I want to say that I said that only past 50 events. Or 50 you specify it uh, through the guard patterns operator, which basically are um, changing the lifetime evaluation of a pattern. Okay, they describe the this time the kind of constraints. They are actually uh, ask the system to trash all the patterns that are not more relevant. Okay, it's a napper state machine, which s separates each uh, uh, each pattern is evaluating over time. So we have two clauses for this. One is the time within and the, the time max within, and we can combine them with the uh, logical guards, which are the not, the end, or the or operator. And for example, the first one was A1, A2, B1 events, and we have the, uh, the first pattern we had, every A followed by a B. The results are reported there. If we specify a logical guard here, we are waiting for a B, but not an A. If the second event that is coming is an A, the, part, the, the pattern match, matches wrongly and is not more evaluated, okay? So we are actually describing which event you are expecting after that one. You can say, I can welcome a B or, or not. Does uh, this make sense? Okay. A second guard example is uh, through the within clause. You basically, you are telling that which, which events I should care about when I'm evaluating the pattern. So, if here I, I trigger for the world stream, here in, on the other end, I don't care about A to A1 because it's out of my scope, which is two seconds. So the final important clause is the insert into clause. Uh, you remember at the beginning I spoke about the, uh, the listeners, you remember? The component, which actually uh, continu is continuously updated by a query, and uh, forward the results to other queries or other streams. It can be specified also through EPL, and the insert clause uh, helps for this reason. This is the, the an example on our running example. Uh, basically, when the pattern we specify in the previous query triggers, matches, we are inserting an events into another stream, okay? So uh, look at that. When you are creating an event uh, through a query, uh, this, the evaluation of the parameters ma is, is, is relevant. So you need to specifically indicate which parameter put in each field of this event. You need to be aware about the structure. So it's basically using the underlying object representation of the event through the EPL query language. Uh, I will show you the final downstream query and then we go again to the online demo to see it. This is, we are now using the stream we created through the previous query, qu counting on it 
the number of fire events that comes. I reduce the time constraints on 10 seconds, otherwise we need to wait for 10 minutes is too much for our scale. But th this is what we have. So this is our final uh, query, which inserts event into this stream, which is created. And then we have the downstream query, which counted. And in 10 seconds, our representation is basically uh, matches uh, for sensor one, followed by for sensor one when the, the temperature was increased, and again uh, every uh, sensor two, uh, uh, second number three, and as we expected, in the downstream query, the counting is increasing from any time the previous one triggers. So at the end, at uh, timestamp three seconds, we have exactly three event in our in our account. So we are creating the network I represent at the beginning uh, between queries, pushing the result of one. That's something that uh, when I start studying EPL was kind of tricky for me to understand because uh, we need to you actually not see the listener components through the, EPL, through, the, through the EPL language. You need to figure out it logically, but it's not. You are attaching just a clause on top of a existing query and it changed the behavior. I mean, you can still retrieve the results, but you, you are forwarding it. So that was the um, final uh, part of the EPL language. Now, I don't know, can we do the Java, uh, Java demonstration a bit? I mean, I'm go, just go through the code to show them the APIs. OK, we have time. So let's first introduce a bit of, of it before going up. So one more thing, uh, event declaration alternatives. Uh, as I showed you at the beginning, you can create events through the create schema clause, but this is not the only option. Uh, they can be represented as a, Java and play, uh, as a plain old Java object, and also as maps. So you can keep the schema of the events very shallow and defining over time. Uh, but this is of course, it wastes a lot of space and memory. And also the standard XML uh, representation is still uh, available. Why do you say standard? Because it's the, the common way to communicate for public subscribe system. So when they were projected in, during the 90s, they used to communicate through EXML. XML. How does um, Java events look like? Uh, basically, it's a public class. Uh, what we need to know is that the getter and the setting, setter naming convention matters. You need them because EPL exploit uh, Java reflection to populate the event while it's using it. And so, how do you name your attributes? Doesn't matter too much. How do you name your the access to those attributes? Matter a lot. Uh, the construct must def must be defined as well both the empty one and the open one. And finally, to have a, a representation of the event, the two string should be re, re, uh, redefined because otherwise you get the its realization. I show you how does it look in practice. So okay. I hope I can. Mm. So let's see, the, for example, the smoke sensor events. Okay. I don't know if it does. Mm. I show you here in this way, you can uh, make everything bigger. So here we have an event. You should see, oh, that's very bad. Are you? Mm. No. This one? I don't no. think it's going to work too much. 
Does it work? It's a blank. Sorry? It's a blank. Yeah. I know you can change it, but if, you, if I do now, I don't think so. <laughs> it's kind of tricky. So, okay, I was like, so the, uh, how we, do in this, we did in, this, in the EPL demonstration, we specified our uh, attributes for the events. And what we need to remember is that the empty constructor is required for the definition of an event through the EPL interface. So he will exploit those methods for, for calling, for uh, populating the instance of the event. And similarly, I did the fire events, which basically comprise both the smoke events and the temperature event, which has a double. Uh, you can use, uh, not, you're not required to use uh, primitive types. You can use whatever you want, as well as you remember its structure because APL explodes all the details of the in included elements. You cannot use arrays. EPL doesn't allow you to describe um, list or you know, collection in general. It's, it's, not, it's not available. Also because it's not easy, to, I, I, I can understand why it's a, a problem of serialization. Pro uh, then we go through the uh, interface. So this part here is just for the, for the console logging. What we need to, to point attention of is the configuration, which is basically uh, the main thing we need to, we need to communicate with, SP, with Esper. As I told you, he has a, a running management system. You can actually add queries and remove them. No, remove them is difficult, but you can add them while it's working, while it's running. Uh, Esper asks you to specify the type of event uh, in, at configuration time. Otherwise, you are going to increase the latency of your query because everything is evaluated uh, in a lazy way. So as soon as a query triggers, all the components of those query are, will be instantiated. OK? So the add event type asks us to, to define two strings. One describes the actual name of the stream in which we put those events. OK, I did for three events, the smoke sensor events, the temperature sensor events, and EVI, the fire events. There is no sensor because we are the logic who triggered this event. Then, uh, time controlling. To make everything easier comparing to what we did on the, in the online uh, interface, I switch ISPER to be controlled, to time, ISPER timing to be controlled externally. So going a little bit forward, uh, ISPER controls time with uh, these kind of events. We, you are not asked to register them into the system. They are native. And they have just one requirement. Timestamp should be um, monotonic. Okay? You cannot never uh, send decreasing timestamps. You will stop the system. From, from execution. So it's a, it's a strict requirement. Then uh, the event service provider is the actual interface we need to talk with Esper. Sim simply speaking, it needs to have the, uh, ch uh, the configuration we create to, for the system and uh, to the event service provider manager, which is the upper level uh, communicator uh, we need to talk with, we get the, the system itself. From it, we can, how to register uh, a statement to it? We need to uh, interact with the part of the system, uh, appositely, which is uh, responsible to deal with the statement management, which is the EPL statement administrator, of course. You can define uh, yours through the config API, uh, specifying which rights it has. But he has a very, uh, how to say, the, the number of possible configuration for the administrator are a lot, uh, is, 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 is big. And it works uh, also in this part from the uh, XML or object configuration. 
for this uh, presentation, I keep it simple. But actually, for my experience, uh, unless you need to distribute the system, you will never, you, you don't need to act too much on the administrator. For uh, standalone deployment of Esper, the default one is, mo is enough. Then, this is the query, if you remember, we, um, we described before. Sorry, in this way, we can, it should be more readable. Let's see. There we go. Um, something I, I, I need to specify is that the fire events is basically a stream. We say that during the EPL demonstration, right? Now, I describe it here through an, a class. That's not a requirement. It's my choice. I can create events on the fly without specifying the schema. Of course, that makes everything harder for Esper because he has to evaluate your, your operation. And then, you know, everything is a, uh, everything goes through the standard object representation of Java. So it's very, it's a very shallow representation of the event, but it's possible. So if you want to, you can be flexible, but you know, you waste performance. So how to create an APL? Uh, you need to register it into the engine. The uh, EPI, EPI, EPI administrator comes for that. And what he returns is an APL statement object. Why? Because from the object-oriented point of view, it's important to think about the query as a, uh, a concrete object. You know, the EPL allows you to uh, iterate over the events it contains. So you can basically uh, get all the um, aggregation or all the, or the content of your window and operate in a pragmatic way which is not usually, uh, is, is, is not available from the EPL language. This is what the Java interface or the .NET interface gives more than that. You can go into the EPL and modify its behavior in a very you know, precise way. Now we get to the listener, and then we get the first, the first difference between the EPL. Remember that this concept here, there is not represented, right? You have just the insert clause, and the, it, you, you cannot actually, um, it's difficult, I mean, I mean, at least it was for me, figure out where the uh, forwarding was represented. In Java, everything is explicit. So you need the, a, co a component, which basically is a, a class which, that implements this interface, and you, you can, uh, manage the content of this component according to the triggering of the window, uh, sorry, of the query. It depends on the query you define. It can be a view-based, a pattern matching, depends on that. In the, for the patching, pattern matching is a bit tricky. It's hard to explain without an example. So I will skip for this time. What you need to know is that for the window, uh, in the context of a uh, sliding window, these two uh, this, the, the parameters of the meta update represent the, in, the outgoing events and the incoming events. So as soon as the window sli uh, slides, you have events, new events, and outer events. For the uh, batch, batch window, the tumbling one, the, the incoming window are the only one represented. The coming events are the only one represented because you forget all the, all, all the, the whole content of the window. Uh, the event bin is a wrapper for all the events. Basically, uh, Esper has to you know, treat a lot of uh, heterogeneous streams, so he cannot rely on, uh, on the knowledge of each of them. He will waste too much uh, resources in the, in the operational time. You can too. Uh, otherwise, uh, um, on the other hand, you, the programmer may need to do that. So the event bin allows you to retrieve the event, through the get underline method, okay? There is the possibility to go deeper in this definition, but I not touch this today, it's too complicated. There are uh, possibilities to define uh, also uh, the subscriber of the query. We can say that in Java, 
a listener can be used as a subscriber. Okay? Theoretically speaking, that's wrong. But in this context, can be used. Okay? This is a very uh, simple uh, listener, as the name said. It basically prints the incoming ev event. So let's finish our uh, demo. The runtime is the API we, are, we were waiting for, the one who allows us to uh, control the behavior of the engine. How? Sending event into it. So that's something that it could be uh, tricky uh, from DJP. Uh, we so always say that the, the, the data are coming. Okay? We are not already targeting a query. Okay? It's up to the engine, this, the dispatching. We are just pushing the events inside it, and then we expect him to, to decide properly according to our registration. Does it make sense? So this is exactly what we did during the presentation. Uh, I remember, the, I, remind you, I remind you that we have to specify the time passing with the current time event close, sorry, the, the current time event pan, uh, type. ISPR doesn't, uh, doesn't restrict the time events, uh, typology, uh, signature. So everything comes from the same uh, source, basically, for him. So let's see what happens if I run this example. Let's go here. And there we go. We have, uh, oh, can I? Possible, I cannot uh, modify this. Hmm. Unfortunately, Eclipse doesn't allow me to easily um, give you the output, but what you can do, oh, sorry, I forgot one important thing. Uh, that's actually very important, sorry. Um, as I told you, there is a difference between the EPR interface and the Java one, the, the listener. The listener should be attached to a query. While when you push the, the resource into, we are not asking, we are not required to know where they should go. When we are asking for the retrieval, yes, we have to. So basically, I attach the listener to the statement which represents the, the output query of my network. That is not a requirement. I can put in the same listener on two queries. Of course, the listener is a, is a bottleneck because it's, a, it's an object. So think about the network, uh, the query network as an actual network. And the resources that are passing through it are wasting your resources. So uh, you need to be careful about how you use the listener. And I used to do that through the, uh, integrating it to the Gene API for what we see, you will so to, we see tomorrow. And the time consuming is, sorry, the memory consumption is not, not you know, something you can forget. So I attach the uh, am I listener to the statement which actually count the uh, the event on this on the first event stream, and what I have uh, as an output is a uh, is the counting of uh, such uh, the number of event triggers. I have uh, one less uh, one uh, time passing less than the EPL API. That's why I have just two and not three, but that's basically the same thing. That's all. Uh, uh, just sorry, I will come back here. And this is my contact. Uh, if you want to have a question about this, and these are the resources. The code is already available on GitHub. Uh, there is also the query. We go, go through all the presentation and the data. We I use it, and they are in the in, in the same project altogether in the resource path. And all the links are already available on the wiki page of the tutorial of the day. Thank you.